A long time ago, somewhere in Japan, there lived Taro, a boy who you could call the laziest boy that ever walked the earth. All day, Taro would simply lie on the platform before his little hut, doing nothing but chatting with the people who walked by. Taro was so charming with his words that although all he did was to lie down and talk, people thought wonderfully of him. Nobody knew where Taro had come from. A farmer had found him as a baby and would have taken Taro for a son, but Taro was just too lazy for the farmer. He couldn't possibly tolerate having such a lazy son. So the farmer let him have this little hut and live there by himself. Charmed by his delightful words, the villagers were so eager to please Taro that they would bring him food and take care of his hut, almost as if Taro were doing them a favor by accepting their help. One day, Mrs. Chin Huan left some dumplings for Taro. Eat the dumplings while they are nice and hot, Taro. If I didn't have guests today, I would have fed them to you myself. I am so sorry, but do partake of them. Mrs. Chin Wan, with others, it is my stomach that relishes their food. But with you, it is my soul. Your dumplings are the most delicious in the whole of Japan, Mrs. Chin Wan. Thank you. Oh, you're a gem, Taro. Taro tried to eat the dumplings even as he was lying down, and they fell to the ground. Oh no! Now his highness of laziness, Mr. Taro, could not be bothered to actually get up and pick up the fallen dumplings. So he let them lie on the ground, waiting for someone to pass by to pick them up for him. Several hours passed, and nobody walked that way, for it was summer and the sun was very hot. At last, a nobleman, who was actually the governor of the province, rode past Taro's hut. Good day, Your Excellency. Do you know me, young man? Your Excellency, a gentleman of your regal demeanor, with a caravan of riders and guards, would certainly be a very high office. Oh, I am impressed with your charm, and I happen to be the governor of this province. Your Excellency, would you please be kind enough to ask one of your men to pick up those dumplings for me? <laughs> and why can you not pick them up yourself? Do you have an ailment? Oh, no, sire. But for someone lying down as comfortably as I, you surely realize what a bother it would be to get up. Plus, you and your men will have to pass by them. But is our time not as important as yours, young man? Why should we stop on our way to do something for which you can very well do for yourself? Look, you are a charming young lad. Start some business. I shall help you. A Business? What do I need so desperately that I should take on the bother of a business? So kind of your excellency, but business is not for me, sire. <laughs> Come and work for me then. See the world. The world is sky and birds and rivers and trees. I can see them very well from here, sire. Thank you for all your compassion, but I assure you, I am very happy as I am. <laughs> How about you getting up to do something to make others happy? Ah, your excellency! You must see for yourself how happy people are to come to me and talk to me. Why, your excellency is smiling himself. <sighs> Well, nobody can show a man what he does not wish to see. And the governor rode off. 
Taro, on the other hand, felt himself to be very important and royal, and told everyone that even the governor had stopped to chat with him and had offered him work. People began surrounding him and serving him even more. One day, a fisherman passed by his home. Taro really wanted to eat fish that day, so Taro asked him. Hey, uh, Sir Fisherman! What a fine catch you seem to have! You must be such an ace fisherman! They are fishes. They would have been caught in anybody's net. Would you please cook one for me tonight? I hear you have a special expertise in cooking fish. Taro, instead of lying here all day, why don't you come with me tomorrow? I shall teach you how to fish and how to cook it. I am not sparing anything from my catch. Get up and move to learn, Taro. The world is far bigger than this platform on which you lie all day. The world is sky and birds and rivers and trees. I can see them very well from here. Thank you. <laughs> Taro. You are like the two frogs Osa and Kyo. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there lived two frogs in our country of Japan. Osa lived along the coastline in a ditch near the town of Osaka. And the Kyo lived in a little stream that ran through the town of Kyoto. Both wanted to see the world. I want to see this world. See what treasures and marvels it holds. Brr. I wonder what lies beyond those mountains. What if there is something that we never dreamed existed? So, one day, the two little frogs set out from their respective homes. Osa from the ditch and Kyo from the stream. They hopped their way across the forests and finally reached a mountain that separated Osaka from Kyoto. Both of them climbed the mountain from their respective sides, and you can imagine each frog's surprise when he reached the top to see another little frog right in front of him. You're traveling too? <sighs> You're traveling too? <laughs> but you have to admit, it is tiring. <laughs> oh, look at my feet, all cracked and hurt. You think all the traveling is worth it? Isn't the world only sand and beach? I don't know. I mean, the world is just rivers and trees. Wait a minute. What's a beach? Oh, it is lots of water. Like a river. Maybe. Can we little frogs see the world from the top here? You know, maybe if we stood on our legs and stretched, I mean, really stretched. Then you would be able to see my city, and I would be able to see your city right here from the mountain. Then I will be able to see whether your beach is like my river. And I will be able to see whether your river is like my beach. So the two frogs stretched, really stretched to see what lay beyond, to see what treasures the world held for them yet. Osa faced Kyoto, and Kyo faced Osaka. But they forgot that they are frogs, and frogs have their eyes on the back of their heads. So when they really stretched and held their noses straight up towards the sky, their eyes saw backwards, and each saw only their own city. Your river looks just like my sea, brr. And your sea looks just like my river, Ribbit. And thus, they missed all the treasures of the world. Do you too have eyes on the back of your head, Taro? Hmm? <laughs> that night, Taro could not sleep. He was not used to being joked about, and when he thought of what the governor and the fishermen had said, Taro knew that they were right. 
So Taro decided that never again would he be joked about. He packed the few belongings he had and went to meet the governor. The governor was pleased, but since Taro had never really learned anything, he was made the assistant to the royal gardener. When Taro actually started working, he realized he loved it. The beads of sweat on his forehead, washing his face and hands with cool water after a day of hard work, the joy of work well done, the delight of learning new things every day, the little things he could do for the flowers by removing weeds, watering them, protecting them from insects. For the first time, Taro was feeling useful and needed in this world. And that feeling was magical. He worked with such dedication and sincerity that the royal gardener was pleased with him and even the prince noticed him. Who is that? He is Taro, my best apprentice, sire. He not just looks after the plants and flowers, he loves them with all his heart. That was true. The charming words that Taro used to please people who looked after him now poured out of Taro as poetry, which he sang to the sky, the stars, and to his own soul. Is this you, or is it my heart which blossoms into joy with your beauty? Every night after the sun set and there was nothing more to do in the garden, Taro sat singing his poems. Everyone in the palace gathered around him to hear him sing. Such sublime thoughts. I wonder where he comes from. Who his parents are. So the prince ordered an investigation, and it was found out that Taro was the prince's own son who had been kidnapped from that very garden when he was a baby. Taro was now the prince's son, and he had a whole army of servants to serve him. But Taro not only did his own work, but tirelessly worked for the welfare of his kingdom. He never let himself become lazy again. As he said in one of his poems, Of all the happiness in the world, the greatest is to know that happiness flows unto others from all the things you choose to do. Laziness is a trap, but when we break it, a whole new, wide, beautiful world opens up before us, and we find happiness just as Taro did.